Morning class. We are here with my trusty assistants. This is Tallulah Rain and this is Tilly Moon. <clears throat> they will be with me here today. We are going to go over the weekly lesson for um, the chapter for memory, um, <clears throat> which would help all of you in terms of how you study. I think if you understood how the brain actually um, keeps information and how it takes it in, which is very important for if we can even remember. Uh, this is why sometimes you always forget the same person's name, even though you meet them numerous times. A lot of it is the initial time, the first time that you meet this person. If it does not go in and it is not held in storage correctly, oftentimes it continues where we forget information um, if we were not completely paying attention the first time. So when we talk about memory, allergies are really bothering my throat. So <clears throat> I apologize for this. When we talk about memory, there's three aspects that the text will discuss. We're talking about encoding, storage, and retrieval. Encoding, how do we take the information in? Storage, where and how do we store it? And then retrieval is how do we recall the information? Um, encoding is, uh, like I said, encoding has a lot to do with do we relate to the information the first time we take it in? When we're reading something, do we understand it? Can we make an association with it? Which is why oftentimes there's certain psychology chapters that you may remember the information and you find it very easy to recall. And part of that reason is, are you interested in it? There's some chapters that you may be more interested in than others. And the more interest we have in something or the more we can relate material to our own lives or our past lives, the more we're likely to remember it. And this all has to do with the encoding process. So just going to go over a few things that the text draws um, talk, discusses in terms of memory. So the attention. Um, there's different types of attention. There's selective, divided, and sustained attention. Sele uh, selective attention is when we pay attention to certain aspects of information in our environment, but we ignore the others. Um, you need selective attention in order to study for your psychology uh, quiz. You have to be able to ignore everything going on around you and focus in on the material that you are reading instead of listening, paying attention more to the song that's playing on the radio. So um, divided attention is multitasking. This is when you're getting up, you're reading, you're getting up, you're reading, you're petting the dog, you're studying, you get, you're doing too many things and it's not encoding the information properly. And sustained attention is the best. This is when we... Um, put ourselves in a room, we completely and solely focus on the material that we are attempting to learn. And so <clears throat> out of all of these, selective and um, sustained are the best way to recall the material that we learn. Now, levels of processing, shallow, intermediate, deepest. And shallow is exactly what we said. It's not really paying attention, you're studying because you have a quiz, you're doing it last minute, you're just trying to pick up the most important parts, not really going to re recall any of this. Maybe you do okay on the quiz, but the day after the quiz, you forgot everything that you were studying. Um, intermediate is when you recognize, you give something a label, you may not understand it. Deepest level is the more associations that we make with the material. For instance, let's say you um, read the material and you understand it because you've experienced the same thing before. Um, so therefore, it's a deeper level of processing. And again, the more interested you are or the more you can relate to it, the more you're going to remember it. Um, in terms of elaboration, um, this is when we draw those connections that I just referred to. And <clears throat> a great old school way of elaborating and preparing for quizzes is it just stands after study, after study, after study, using note cards or writing down notes, taking notes means that your brain is memorizing the material without trying to memorize because your hand is having to look up, 
or listen to the material. It's having to actively engage in it and write it down. And it allows the brain to elaborate and recall it much easier. So if you have issues with um, your quizzes and, and studying the material and remembering the material, take notes, write, uh, actually write the notes out that you are, um, that you are attempting to remember. Mental imagery, I always say this, if there is a picture in the book, say the one um, for the biological module where it's got images of the brain and the brain parts, studying those images is going to be significantly easier for you to recall the information versus writing uh, or not necessarily writing it down, reading it um, over and over, either writing down or looking at the visual imagery, that helps the mental um, processing go deeper. You want a deeper level of processing. Now, just a couple of other things. Um, the text goes into short-term memory. It breaks down different types of memory. But in short-term memory, how do we try to remember things, even if we're not going to remember them forever? We chunk the information. And by chunking, we mean that... <clears throat> we rehearse it over and over. We say it to ourselves. We continue to look at it. We group information that's similar. Um, brain parts that are in the frontal cortex versus those that are in the um, hind cortex, in the back of the brain. So we chunk information, rehearsal, repeat it over and over. These are ways that we remember information. Working memory is where memory is temporarily held uh, while we perform cognitive tasks, while we are taking the quiz, we are using our working memory because we are using recall in our brain to pull that information to the forefront while we are taking the quiz and answering questions. Long-term memory is permanent. It's semi-permanent. I wouldn't say it's permanent. Um, if you don't use it, you lose it. That's a, a golden rule with the brain and memory. Um, we have virtually unlimited space in the brain to remember as much as we want for as long as we want, but we have to continually be um, accessing that information so that we can remember it, so that it's constantly pulling up um, and that we're remembering it. So in terms of memory, I want you, when you go through this chapter, try to relate, um, think about, well, how do you best study and how can you use memory tactics that are discussed in this module or in this um, learning chapter, how can you use those to help you better um, retain information for this class and for all of your classes? When you were reading, um, a couple of things to take away is um, any type of visual. If you've got graphs, if you've got pictures, those tend to be much easier to um encode and retain in our working memory than just simple reading. Another is actually writing the, down the notes. Taking um, notes allows us to use, um, be involved in the task of encoding because we're writing. And then at the same time, the brain is encoding, is also you know moving into that memory storage space so that it's easier for recall. So try to use this chapter in terms of how can I better learn and, re and remember material from all of my classes. It's a really interesting chapter. We all want to have the best memory that we possibly can um, because if you, like I said, you've got to continuously recall the information in order to remember it. And we want to do this. This is why what word puzzles um, are great for um, allowing our cognitive task, our memory to continue to work um, and, and bring up information so that it develops uh, neurons so that we can remember. Anyway, I hope this helped clarify the chapter just a little bit.